And as we are enjoying this happiness, we consider the relationship of our mind towards this happiness. The ideal attitude is to let go. That means let be. We allow this mind and the body to be the way they are. We are not angry if they are doing something else. We are fine if they are doing what we want. And as we allow, permit this body to be heavy, we enjoy the freedom from worry about the body. we consider the peace that we achieve as we allow the body to be the way it is. Not only that we allow the heaviness of the muscles to be heavy, but we also allow all of the other things in the body, such as if we have any painful part in the body or any itchy part in the body, we allow them to be the way they are. We don't bite them. We don't touch them. We enjoy the freedom that we have from worry about the body. And we can now share this peace with other living beings in our mind voicelessly. We can wish, we can allow. May all beings, including me, be in peace. including me, be in peace. And again, we do not force peace. Instead, we allow peace to arise in the mind. And again, we are curious about the relationship between the mind and the peace, whether peace is there or not. We don't worry. We just allow this peace to come. because the time for this sitting is finished. Let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. 
And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. So that means that we will take one of our legs and we will keep it by the side. Um, just like Tenza is doing it and Andre is doing it and Emily is doing it. So Robert and Alex, you can do it too. Very good, very good. So that's how we sit right as we finish meditation. Krixus also please uh, sit in the way that Emily, Tenza, Andre and others are sitting. So Krixus, I'm talking to you. Uh, we have finished meditation, Krixus, so you can take one of your legs and put it by the side. Yes, yes, perfect. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so in meditation, the, the number one thing, the very starting thing, the very basic thing is not to move. Everything else will maybe come later. But the first thing that you want in your meditation is to stay like a statue. So whatever would be the movement with your fingers or with your lips or with your legs or whatever else, all that uh, needs to be avoided. So uh, whenever you're making such movements, uh, whenever you're making such movements, uh, then uh, it means that you are um, you are breaking your meditation and then uh, that's not a good thing so you're already you already give the time to meditation so you don't want to break it right you want to make use of your time in the best way you can uh, Thiri, uh, there was a girl who uh, bit her lips like this like you're doing it and then her parents took her to a doctor and the doctor removed all of her teeth so that she could not bid her lips. What do you think about that, Thiri? Do not bite your lips, all right? If you bite them too much, then you may harm yourself. Then the parents may take you to the, to the doctor and remove your lips so that you don't harm yourself anymore. It's just so simple. Okay. Uh, but that's a true story. That's something that really, really happened. And then uh, they really removed, the doctor really removed all of her, uh, all of her teeth. And then she really did not bite her lips. It worked. <laughs> so uh, now uh, what's coming is that uh, we are going to recite the three refuges and the five precepts. And today uh, is the Burmese uh, the Burmese week so we have one week is Sri Lanka another is Burmese then again Sri Lanka the, then again Myanmar so today is the Myanmar week and therefore we are going to um, recite them in the Myanmar pronunciation so pronunciation is the way how you say uh, how you say words and uh, Burmese way of saying the Buddha's words is a little different than in the Sri Lanka, in the island of Sri Lanka. It is good to know both of the pronunciations. If you know Myanmar pronunciation, you can then join your parents or your family or uh, the country of your origin, that's Myanmar, um, anyone there in reciting Three Refuges Five Precepts as because your sound of the recitation is the same. And if you know the Sri Lanka pronunciation, that is in all, all of the world except of Myanmar, uh, pronounces in Sri Lanka pronunciation. So with Sri Lanka pronunciation, if you are anywhere else, let's say in the US, and you have, uh, and you have um, an opportunity to recite Three Refuges, Five Precepts with your friends who are not Burmese, uh, well, again, you can join them in the recitation and have the same sound so that you do not feel weird. Um, uh, Felix, I'm, uh, I'm sorry for, for admonishing you like this, but this is very important.
important. Uh, do not sit in this in this posture. It's very very unhealthy for you. If you sit in this posture, then you will have legs into X. Do you know what's that? Having legs into X. Uh, uh, some people when they stand up, then instead of their legs being straight like this, their legs are into X like this. And uh, that is very, uh, there is very not nice. Uh, then other people, uh, other students may bully these who have legs in X. Other uh, guys may uh, laugh and ridicule them. And we don't want Felix uh, to be ridiculed by anyone. So Felix, be careful and never sit in that posture you are sitting. It's very unhealthy. All right. So now... Um, Let's move on to that recitation. So, um, although we will be reciting in Burmese pronunciation, you will see it in English letters. Uh, we call them Roman script. Roman script means uh, Roman script means that it is uh, the way of writing from the great Roman Empire. Have you ever heard of Roman Empire? Anyone? If you did, raise your hand. Yes. Emily, have you ever heard of Roman Empire? No. No? Okay. And Tenza? I've heard of Rome, but not Roman Empire. I see. Well, it's basically the same thing. It's just that Roman Empire is the expanded version of Rome. Thank you, everyone. You can remove... You, you can... Uh, um, how to say that? Uh, unraise your hands or lower your hands. So, uh, so um, Rome is the city and Roman Empire is the empire that uh, was the huge empire uh, um, with the center in Rome. And uh, this was the time, uh, a short time before Christ, about 2000 years ago um, and around that time. So in Roman Empire, uh, their writing style was different, for example, from the Chinese or from the Arabic. And uh, their writing style uh, gradually developed in the way we today write in English. So that's why we call the English letters Roman script, because it is the script, it is the way of writing that comes from the times of the Roman Empire. Yes, Felix? I'm my water. I'm yes, please. Some water. Yes, please. All right. So I will share with you, I will show you the, uh, the text. So uh, again, we will be reciting in Burmese pronunciation, but you see the Sri Lanka or the international version instead of the Burmese letters. And that is why we will be reading a little bit different way than what you see written. So you need to be very careful about my pronunciation. Um, three things that you may like to remember are that uh, sa in English is read as tha in Burmese, then cha in English is read as sa in English uh, in Burmese, and finally ja in English is read as za in Burmese. So sa becomes tha, cha becomes sa, and uh, and ja becomes za. That's the uh, that's the ultimate basics. But that's not enough. That's not enough. There are many more differences. So, uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, if you have a vowel like this u followed by two consonants g g, then it is no more anugahan, but it becomes a no gahan. Or here with B U D D. So when you have U followed by two consonants, U followed by D D, well then you read it instead of Buddha, you read it as Bodha. 
or when you have a followed by two consonants then you do not read it as gachami in the sri lanka pronunciation in myanmar you would read it as gisami so from gachami becomes gisami remember that ja is becomes sa but the a a sound becomes e why because it's followed by two consonants similarly here you have the word maja so a is followed by two consonants well then it becomes e so uh, and ja changes into za so it is miza so those are some of the uh, very uh, interesting uh, differences one one more um, when you have a followed by two consonants but one of them is ny well then it becomes ye so from panja it becomes piensa piensa all right so that's uh, that's all for this little introduction and we can start so i will say yamaha wadami dawadeta which means what i say you say uh, repeat after me and you can then reply ama bhanti which means yes venerable sir so i'll ask everyone to unmute please and uh, when you are taking uh, the three refuges and five precepts uh, you need to be sincere honest about that so you can keep your hands together like this at the chest thank you and uh, now let's try it together yamahang vadami down what it huh yes that's right so i say yamahang vadami down what it huh and you just reply ama bhanti so let's try that again yamaha wadami down what it huh perfect yes uh, I would like to ask Tara to to uh, take the the camera somewhere down so that the boys do not have pain in their necks as they're looking up. Uh, I think you you can maybe put it on on one of the armchairs that you have their back. Because when when someone is doing this, you know, for one hour, the neck will be painful. We don't want that. So maybe uh, Tara may like to take the camera and move it on the on one of the armchairs. That that would be much better, much more comfortable. Okay, okay, yes, that looks much better. Yeah, uh, I want the camera to be a little higher so I can see the student during meditation, but after meditation, it's uh, very good to keep the camera somewhere lower uh, so that the student's neck doesn't get painful. All right, so now uh, comes the repeating part. So make sure that you keep your hands together at the chest and that you listen very carefully to my pronunciation to the way how i say those words so that you can follow as exactly as you can so we can start you can repeat after me aham bhanti aham bhanti titaranena titaranena taha Piensa tilan. Piensa tilan. Dhamman yasami. Dhamman yasami. Anogahan. Anogahan. Katawa. Katawa. Tilan deta. Tilan deta. Me bhante. 
Anukampa. Upadaya. Upadaya. Duti Yampi. Duti Yampi. Aham Bhanti. Aham Bhanti. Titarane Nataha. Pien Satilan. Pien Satilan. Dhamma Yasami. Dhamma Yasami. Anogahan Katawa. Anogahan Katawa. Tilan Deta Me Bhante. Anukampan Upadaya Anukampan Upadaya Dati Yampi Aham Bhante Dati Yampi Aham Bhante Titarane Nataha Titarane Nataha Pien Satilan Dhamma Yasami Anogahan Katawa Tilan De Tame Pante Anukampan Upadaya Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambo Tata Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambo Tata Namo Tata Bhagavato Arahato Tamma Tambo Tata Bodhan Taranan Gishami Bodhan Taranan Gishami Dhamman Taranan Gishami Dhamman Taranan Gishami Tanghan Taranan Gishami Tanghan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Bodhan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Bodhan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Dhamman Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Dhamman Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Tanghan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Tanghan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Bodhan Taranan Gishami Duti Yampi Dhamman Taranan Gishami Dati yang bida mantar nan kisami Dati yang bida ngantar nan kisami Dati yang bida ngantar nan kisami Tarana. So now you have taken the refuge in the Buddha, in the Dhamma, in the Sangha. So in this case, you are reminding yourself that the Buddha, the, uh, the teacher, uh, Dhamma, the Buddha's teachings, and the Sangha, that's the community of monks, that uh, they help you, that they support you on your way towards 
the ultimate uh, happiness towards the ultimate peace not just towards ultimate peace but also towards peace and happiness and success in this very life uh, although the, uh, the, uh, the highest aim or the highest goal of the practice is indeed the ultimate peace that means a peace that's free from birth old age sickness and death all right, so now I will acknowledge the fact that uh, you're going for these three refuges uh, is uh, complete and you can then reply Pamabhanti. So let's try that together. Dharanagamanam Paripounam Pamabhanti. Yes, very well. So um, going for refuges is very important so what's a refuge refuge a refuge is a place that is peaceful it's a place where you have safety where you have peace where you are comfortable and in this world it's very hard to find a place where you are uh, safe peaceful comfortable always but in the buddha in the buddha's teachings in the community of monks you can find the ultimate peace that is everlasting and that's why we call them the refuges the buddha the buddha's teachings and community of monks or the buddha dhamma sangha they provide you with the guidance with the uh, with the instruction and support on your path toward your eternal everlasting peace so that's why we take them as refuges and now uh, what comes is the first guidance from the buddha dhamma and sangha what is that that's the following of five precepts following of the five precepts is the ultimate basics for following the buddha's teachings uh, those who follow the five precepts they can then work on that and develop uh, higher virtue and develop meditation so following five precepts is the absolute uh, basics of all of this practice so that's what's coming now the first precept means i follow the rule of refraining from killing living beings it means we never kill not just that we do not kill humans but also do not kill insects or uh, any other beings but this also uh, is related to the partial harming. So you do not necessarily have to kill to break this rule. If you just harm someone, if you injure them well, then you also broke this rule. But it must be intentional. So if it is unintentional, if you unintentionally harm, harm someone, then it is not breaking this rule at all. But it must be genuine, true, honest, unintentional. If it is like uh, okay so i will now run very fast against my friends so that i bump into them and they will be harmed um, then that in in fact is actually intentional because you intend to bump into your friend even though you decided to just run carelessly so uh, we need to be very careful and we never harm others instead when others are harmed we help them so not only that we do not harm others but we also help them so that they are not harmed and if they are already harmed we help them so that their harm disappears as soon as possible i've noticed that andre doesn't have edward today right andre is edward joining us today or is he having um, whatever birthday or something well edward has a fever venerable sir so he's oh, not coming okay okay so I wish Edward to be healthy soon and join us again uh, next time. And uh, now regarding the first precept. So whenever someone is harmed, we wish them that they are healthy as soon as possible, that they are uh, happy as soon as possible, and we ourselves never cause harm to others. So you can repeat after me. Remember to keep your hands together at the chest. Panati Pata Panati Pata Where are money? Where are money? 
So here notice the difference. In Sri Lanka it is Sikkapadang, but in Myanmar it is Teikapadang. So let's try that together. Teikapadang. Teikapadang. Tamadiyami. Tamadiyami. The second precept means I follow the precept of refraining from taking what is not given. It means we never steal. Uh, we never take what's not given. And if we want to borrow anything, we first ask for permission and then we can borrow. A day na da na. A day na da na. Where are money? Where money? Take up a dan. Take up a dan. Tama de yami. Tama de yami. The third precept means I follow the precept of refraining from sexual misconduct. It means uh, we, uh, when uh, when you get married, when you have a husband or wife, then you love only your husband or your wife. You never fall in love with any other lady or with any other man. Kame tu. Kame tu. Me sa sa ra. Me sa 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 ra. Where are money? Where are money? Take up a dan. Take up a dan. Tama di yami. Tama di yami. The fifth precept means I follow the precept of refraining from drinking alcohol and taking drugs. Dura me raya. Dura me raya. Miza. Miza. Bamadatana. Bamadatana. Where are money? Where are money? Take up a dan. Take up a dan. Tama de yami. Tama de yami. So now uh, I will encourage you all uh, to uh, protect and follow these three refuges and uh, these five precepts and to make effort mindfully. Why would you be mindful? Well, you are mindful so that you notice that you want to break one of the five precepts. You may notice, oh, I want to tell a lie. I want uh, to steal something or I want to kill this little insect. You can notice it on time only if you're mindful. What is to be mindful? Well, to know what's going on in the mind. If you know what's going on in the mind every moment, well, then you can easily avoid um, the intention or especially the action of breaking the five precepts. So being mindful means to be in the present moment and be aware of what's going on with the mind. I'll repeat that. To be mindful means to be in the present moment so you are careful about what's going on now and be aware, be clear about what is going on in the mind now. And because you're mindful, you can easily make effort to follow the five precepts because you easily notice that the desire to break any of the five precepts has come. And you notice the desire as it is coming. And therefore, you can easily kick it away. So uh, I will wish you that you follow the five precepts and protect the three refuges very well and make effort mindfully. And then uh, you can reply, Ama Bhante, which means, yes, Venerable Sir. So let's try that together. Ditarane na tanthen pien sati lan dhamman ta dukan turek kitan katwa apa ma de na tampa de ta. So now I will wish you all to be happy, healthy, to attain Nibbana very soon. And you, if you agree with that, if you like that, you can reply in the Burmese way, tadhu, 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 which means well said, well said, well said. So let's try that together. 
May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Yes, very well. So, uh, Sadhu actually is the Sri Lanka pronunciation. Dadhu is the Burmese pronunciation. In Myanmar, uh, Sa sound changes into Tha. All right, so this was uh, for our uh, precepts, for our uh, refuges recitation, uh, for our meditation. Now we have last seven minutes or six minutes. So if you have any question, uh, now is the time to ask. We will have to continue with the Prince Tata story next time. Today I was explaining uh, the basics. So if you want to know anything, if you have any question, now is the time to ask. Yes, did he? Um, so, um, if someone's hurt and you don't help them, is that also breaking the first I cannot hear you well. Can you come closer to the microphone and tell us again? The question was, if, if someone gets hurt and you don't help them, would that be breaking the first few years? I see. If someone is harmed and you do not help them, would it be breaking the precept? Did I understand right? Yes. So, um, there are so many people who are harmed today in the world and we don't help them. Millions and millions of people are harmed right now at 5.55 p.m. of Florida time or New York time or 5.55 a.m. of Vietnam time. Right now, so many people are injured and harmed, and they suffer, they have so much pain all around the world, in the U.S., in Mexico, in Canada, in Europe, in Africa, in India, in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, uh, in Thailand, in China, and um, Australia, in all, uh, pretty much in every country, there is some people who, are, uh, who have pain and who are suffering. And we are not helping them now. What am I going to do with that? I am not helping all of those people right now. I cannot hear you, Theory. The sound is very bad. Uh, it's very hard to understand. If you can help. I see. If we can help. Well, we can help all of them. We can try. We can try to make some uh, ways, but we do not uh, try to help everyone, everyone at the same time, right? We could try to make make ways how to help others, but we don't do that, do that right? We would have to establish many, many hospitals and take care of the, all those hospitals all around the world and uh, speak with all the governments and say, hey, there are people harmed in your country, you need to help them. We don't do that. So, if you do not harm someone, even if you can, it yes. is not breaking of any rule. But there is a problem because you lose the chance to do something good for them. When you do something good for someone else, you actually do it for yourself. According to the law of Gamma, the law of uh, our actions and reactions, uh, when we do something, Oops. the same uh, kind of feeling that we cause will happen backward to us. So if we, uh, for example, harm someone, we cause them feeling of, uh, of suffering. We cause them feeling an unpleasant feeling. And that's exactly what will happen to us. We will experience unpleasant feeling for causing another person unpleasant feeling. If I uh, cause someone pleasant feeling, then the result will be that I will later experience pleasant feeling. And if I do not cause anyone pleasant or unpleasant feeling, well, then that means I myself will not experience pleasant or unpleasant feeling. It's just that simple. But we want to experience pleasant feeling. Why? Because we probably, very probably, very certainly, have caused a lot of unpleasant feeling in the past, in our previous lives. And because we have done that, there is yet to repay them. So we will suffer. There is no way out of that. 
we will suffer until we are in this world we will suffer the consequences the rewards the punishments for our actions from the past so we have done so many actions in the past because we had so many lives in the past and therefore because we are here in this danger that we may suffer for things that we did in the past we need to balance it out by good actions so we always do good actions because we are always ready that suffering pain harm is coming to us soon because of the bad deeds that we did in the past and we also never ever do any bad deeds we never ever harm anyone because that will get back to us not only in this life but in the next life and the life after the next and the life after the next after the next and in the life after the next after the next after the next and so on so we never do any bad deeds anymore because we know how it is troublesome when we have a bad deed done thousand lives ago coming and causing us pain now we don't want that so we don't want to do more you know what i mean what is done is done finished we cannot change it but we can change now and we can change the future so we are interested in what we are doing now and we avoid doing any bad deeds uh, of uh, of now and of the future and instead we balance whatever we might have done bad in the past we balance it out by the good so we do extremely much good we are generous as much as we can we follow the rules very strictly we meditate every day as much as we can wow why because we want to balance out the potential bad deeds that we have done in the past and that we don't know about it's like the virus you know when you do not have a virus still you live uh, you live in a um, in a close place to make sure that no one will suffer and because you maybe have the virus you don't know and if it is true that you have the virus well then that's a problem and if you do not um, if you do not apply the uh, the necessary security the necessary safety well then that will be a lot of suffering for many people in that same way we don't know whether we have done bad deeds in the past we probably did but we don't know what kinds of them we did and how much so we secure we keep ourselves safe how do we keep ourselves safe by never doing anything bad anymore and by and by doing good deeds as much as we can anytime as uh, every day yes emily if you kill someone at a young age, will you die at a young age? Um, this is a very good question. This is a very good question. And you will be very surprised. Because killing a child is never as bad as killing an adult in the Buddhist understanding. Uh, in American understanding, it is the opposite. Killing a child is worse than killing an adult. But in Buddhism, killing a child is not worse. Killing an adult is worse than killing a child. Probably because an adult already has some past, has some training, learning, you know, a lot of uh, experiences. And therefore, adult people, and especially old people, are very precious in Buddhism. In Buddhism, uh, we respect old people. Monks respect older monks, and lay people respect elder lay people. You have great respect towards your parents and great respect to all who are old because they are experienced. Even if they don't remember anything, they are experienced. And that's the experience which you do not have. So that's why there's, uh, there's a high value in an older person, higher than in a young person. And if someone kills children, then they will not have children in the future. So uh, children are understood as a possession of their parents. Like if you make a drawing, if you draw something nice, uh, then uh, or not nice, whatever you draw, then that's your possession. That's what you made. It's yours. And therefore, if you destroy it, no one can blame you. If uh, parents 
uh, destroy their children, theoretically they should not be blamed. But they will not be able to have other children in the future. Because destroying one's children means that they're causing harm, right? So then they will be harmed. How will they be harmed? Because they cannot have children later when they want them. It's not like, oh, they will not want children. No, 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 no. That's not related. When they want children, they will not be able to have them. So uh, this is very important to realize. Many ladies, they are going to have a baby, but they don't want it. They go and they kill the, ch the child. As a result, they will not be able to have a child in their next life. It's extremely, uh, it's extremely uh, strict in, in the Buddhist teachings. So, um, the, uh, so, but that's all, nothing else. So if someone doesn't care that they will have, uh, whether they have children in the future or not, uh, well, then they may uh, go around this role and they may think that this is fine, but it's absolutely not fine. Because it's uh, not only that we do not kill other living beings, regardless of their age, but we, uh, because we, would, we don't want to suffer in the future, but we also do not kill them because we want to be a good person. Was that for being a good person? To get trust. We want to be good people so that others trust us. I want other people to trust me. When people trust me, well, then they support me if I have a problem. If I have a problem and people don't trust me, well, then they will not help me. If I, uh, if I, uh, if I uh, need something to eat or I need something to dress myself and I don't have it anymore, well, then I will ask people for help. Lay people ask, peop uh, ask each other for help in their job. You have to go to an office and you have to ask for a job. If the people in the on the job do not believe you, well, then you do not get the job. So you cannot make money and then you don't have food and then, sorry, you will be hungry. Or you do not have, make money, you cannot buy your clothes, well, then, sorry, you will be naked. So it's very important for us to maintain good relationships with others. And the main, ba the basics for good relationships is trust. When other people know that you have your principles, your precepts or rules, and that you follow them very carefully, then they can trust you because they know this guy will never kill. This guy will never steal, never commit adultery, never tell lies, never drink alcohol or take drugs. They know it because they know you, because you have shown it. You have shown that you will never drink alcohol even when you are offered. You have shown that you will never tell lies even though everyone at that time would tell a lie. That's how you get trust, through these difficult times. And then people will see, this guy will not tell me a lie even if it is difficult for him. And then they trust you. And that's when they support you. So, um, the, so killing, even if you think that this is not a big killing, like killing a mosquito is not a big thing, right? It's indeed not a big thing at all. But it is a thing. It is breaking the rule. And therefore, it is breaking your trust. And also, later, if you are born as a mosquito, you will be, born, uh, you will be killed. So you don't want to be killed even if you are born as a mosquito. You never know what, what will you be born as in the next life. The birth, uh, the next life is a, is a little bit of difficulty because you never know what will you be born as. You may be born in hell or as an animal or as an insect or as a bacteria. You don't know. You may be born as a virus, maybe. I'm not sure our scriptures do not know about viruses. But uh, definitely you can be born as an insect and you can be born as an animal. You can be born as a ghost. You don't want that. But sometimes it's difficult to avoid it. So if it happens that you are born in, uh, as an animal or as a ghost, at least you want your life of ghost or animal to be as pleasurable as possible. You know, many dogs uh, are born in the U.S. and then... They are killed in a gas chamber. And many other dogs are born in the U.S. And they are cared for like kings. They have beautiful clothes. They have wonderful food. They can sleep in the bed with their, with their uh, how you call them, with their caretaker. 
Oh, that's so comfortable. They go for a medical checkup every year. Oh, who has that? Many humans do not have it, but these animals have, it, have that. So uh, if it ever happens to you that you happen to be born as a ghost or as an animal, at least you want that life to be as pleasurable as possible. So again, you can uh, do that, you can uh, achieve that through following uh, through following the precept, uh, through following the precepts very strictly. So that's my answer to Emily about uh, killing uh, killing children. If uh, killing children is not as a bad deed as killing adults, but it's a very bad deed, and it must never ever be done. Instead, instead uh, of uh, killing children, we support children so that they are healthy. We support children so that they are happy. That's what we all should do. We support children so that they are healthy and happy, and as they are healthy and happy, they will become healthy and happy adults. And when they are healthy and happy adults, you know what will happen? They will not kill. They will not steal, commit adultery, tell lies, and drink alcohol, take, take drugs. Why? Because they're healthy and happy. Why? Because they're wise. As they, when they were kids, they were, um, they were healthy, they were happy, and therefore they could explore the world. As they explored and learned about the world, they realized, ha, huh, drinking alcohol is so bad, that means I should never drink it. And then when they become adults, they never drink alcohol. Because they were not healthy and happy, they did not explore the world enough, and they think that drinking is, uh, alcohol is fine, and therefore when they are adults, they drink alcohol, and when they get drink, drunk, they go home and they beat their children, they beat their wife, and that's a problem. We never want anyone ever to drink alcohol even a little bit. Yes, Tiri? You're born as a bacteria, what's bad about it? I don't understand what you say. Come as far as you can. If you are born as a bacteria, what is bad about that? What is bad about that? Well, because you are killed, ever, you are always killed. You are basically uh, born to be killed. As a bacteria, you're born to be killed because uh, basically everything feeds on bacteria. Your body now is feeding on bacteria. Your body is now using bacteria for, uh, for its support. When you are eating fruit and vegetables and things, they have bac bacteria. Uh, whether it's a hamburger or pizza or uh, apple or whatever, there are bacteria in everything. Uh, about... Um, 10%, so I'm not sure, about 10% of all of this body are bacteria. So, so imagine, imagine that you are a bacteria born in a hair of someone, or a bacteria born on the tongue of someone, or a bacteria born on, uh, inside the ear of someone, or inside the buttocks of someone. You don't want to be born like that, right? Or do you? Uh, yes, Emily? Is catching a fish included as killing a fish? If you don't kill it, then it's, uh, then it's um, as bad as if, you, uh, as if you catch someone by taking them around their neck and saying, now I have caught you. And then uh, that's not comfortable, right? If someone takes you from the back and they catch you like this by their hand, there is a word for that, but I don't know these words. Uh, so uh, then that's not nice, right? Even if they release you. But it still is not killing. And if you do it out of fun and you say, ah, ha, ha, that was just fun, then it's not so bad. It's definitely not as bad as killing. When you catch a fish, uh, the fish um, uh, bites the hook uh, in order to get, uh, to get the bait. And then when you take the fish, you can decide whether you keep the fish back in the water or not. But the fish is afraid, and it seems that the fish actually knows what's going on. So uh, you put the fish into a life threat. The fish is afraid of her life. Uh, the fish is afraid that it will be now killed. And that's not nice. You don't want to be afraid that someone is going to kill you now. And so we don't want to make those fish afraid that uh, they will be killed now, even if we release them. But it's not breaking the precept. 
Okay, so I need to move uh, somewhere else. They're waiting for me. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, and I hope to see you next week. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Goodbye, Venerable Sir. <laughs>